Hi, this is uh, Keith Smith, and this is Hyperledger Fabric CA version 1.1 preview uh, overview on the attribute-based access control, or ABAC for short, mechanism. This is the URL uh, containing the documentation that I'll take you through now. Notice that this is under the Fabric Core Chain Code Lib CID. CID is short for Client Identity. So let's let's go to the documentation now. This uh, documentation is divided into two parts. The first section is how to use the library itself, and the second part is how to put attributes into uh, certificates using Fabric CA. So first, how do we use this library? Uh, we import this package, and this package then has the following APIs available to us. CID get ID, which returns a unique ID within the MSP. And each of these APIs take the stub parameter, which is passed to you in chain code. Next, you can get the MSP identifier. Next, you can uh, get an attribute value uh, where you pass in the name of the attribute that you want to retrieve. Returns the value, whether or not the attribute existed and an, whether or not an error occurred when trying to retrieve the attribute. Next, a convenience wrapper uh, it allows you to assert a specific attribute value. Uh, here we pass in the name of the attribute and the value of the of that attribute that we want to assert. And if that attribute is uh, missing, not found, or if it doesn't have the value that we're asserting, an error is returned. And the last API is the get X509 certificate API that you can use to extract any information you want from the client's uh, certificate. Note, however, that this is specific uh, to the, the default MSP, which is X509 based. Therefore, if you use this API and other MSPs that are not X509 based, uh, your, your chain code will not be able to work with those. Uh, lastly, from a, from a chain code uh, library API perspective, if you want to, there are times where you may want to perform multiple operations. And in order to do that more efficiently, it's recommended that you create a client ID object by calling the new method. This assigns the ID object to the ID variable. And then we, in this example, we call two of the APIs. We call the MSP ID, and then based upon the MSP ID, we assert different attribute values. So in this case, if the org ID, if the MSP ID is org1 MSP, and then we assert the adder1. Otherwise, and if it's org2, we assert adder2. Otherwise, we don't recognize any of the MSPs. Okay, so that's how to use the, uh, the client ID library. Let me show you real quickly as well. Uh, this is in the Fabric Samples. Uh, there's a, uh, a Fabric CA uh, sample uh, that has been added that I'll talk about in another recording, but it contains a ABAC chain code that you can find in uh, Fabric Samples chain code ABAC. And notice here, it simply uh, include, imports this uh, package, and then it uh, uses it asserts an attribute value. It's doing so in the init method uh, to make sure that only an administrator or someone with the abac.init attribute value of true is allowed to uh, initialize this chain code. Okay, now let's go back to adding attributes to identities. That is, how do we how do we get these attributes into certificates in the first place? Uh, this is something that is specific to Fabric CA. I should mention that you will not be able to get uh, these attributes and certificates for external CAs. 
So uh, there are two methods of doing this with Fabric CA. Uh, first is at registration time, and the next is at enrollment time. So first at registration time. Notice this is a your standard registration uh, function call from a Fabric CA client. Uh, here at the end, we specify the attributes that are to be registered. And most of this is as it was before, where in this case, we uh, have a comma-separated list of attribute names and values. That's app1 admin, value true, email attribute, value user1 at gmail.com. The thing that's new here is the colon esert, and this is modifying the app1 admin. And this simply means that uh, it marks the app1 admin attribute as being an attribute that, which should be added to an esert by default if and only if a specific set of uh, attributes are not requested at enrollment time. And I'll show you an example of that following this uh, in just a bit. Okay, second way of requesting attributes is that it is on the enroll command or in enrollment time. Notice here that uh, the dash dash enrollment dot adders is new. And in this case, we provide a comma separated list of attribute names, not their values, but just their names. And so we're, we're requesting the email and the phone attribute. Notice in this case, this user did not have the phone attribute. It only had app1 admin and email attributes. So phone attribute has a colon op, which means if the user doesn't have that attribute, then just skip it. It means it's optional. If we had not put colon opt and we had requested the phone attribute, it would have returned an error for this user because he did not have that attribute. Okay, and uh, last on this documentation, I wanted to show you uh, how these attributes are stored in a certificate. This is an example of OpenSSL just uh, printing out the certificates. Uh, notice that here's, for example, is the subject, the CM. Down under the X509 extension section, you can see this custom extension uh, with the value of that extension being a JSON object uh, with adders and uh, names and values. So in this case, the attribute named adder1 with a value of value1. Okay, so now let me uh, show you a bit of a demo here. I've started up my Fabric CA server uh, with uh, this bootstrap user, admin admin pw. And on my, with my client, I'm going to do four things. Uh, first, I'm going to do the standard enrolling of my uh, bootstrap user, admin. And then using that identity, I'm going to register the uh, the user user one that with exactly the same things that I showed you on the previous screen with app one admin email uh, where app one admin will be, will be a default uh, certificate uh, attribute. Next, I will um, enroll uh, this user with without specifying any request for enroll for attributes. Uh, third, I will try to enroll user one with uh, requesting the adders, email, and phone. And notice in this case, phone is not optional, so this will error out because he doesn't have that attribute. And then lastly, I will request uh, the fourth step is to request the certificate with email and phone being optional. And this will succeed and return a certificate with just the email attribute. Okay, so let me run that, uh, this script called adders that contains that. Okay, notice that uh, 
that we finished all of the steps successfully except for step three where we tried to request the attribute with the phone uh, or the, the certificate with the phone attribute which it did not have and so it returned the error appropriately. All other steps succeeded. And now let me uh, let's just print out the the attributes from the, the first successful enrollment, and this is the default case. You can see that it did indeed add the app one admin with a value of true attribute. And next, let's uh, print the, uh, the, the second one was under the E2 directory. And this was when we specifically requested a certificate or an attribute with the email attribute, and you can see that it did indeed put just the email attribute in the certificate. And that concludes uh, attribute-based access control. Thank you.